Hey there guys, I am The Six Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. Today we're going to be taking a look at another unit from the new Orc Codex that appears to be well worth considering in your Orc Force based on the changes and the updates that we have seen so far. And today we are going to be diving into the miniature mechanical terrors of the Killer Khans. The humble Killer Khan is the small grot controlled cousin of the Death Dread and in the current 8th edition codex comes in at 50 points for a movement 6, weapon skill 5 up, ballistic skill 4 up, strength and toughness 5, 5 wound, 3 attack, 3 up save profile with a leadership of 6. And alongside that profile you can take a variety of weapons from big shooters to rocket launchers to grotzookas as well as a variety of melee weapons from buzz saws to drillers to the Khan Claw. This profile in the new 9th edition codex has been improved and also thankfully in my opinion a little bit simplified. Now for a very pleasant drop of 10 points down to 40 base, the Killer Khan gets a buffed weapon skill to 4 plus and crucially much like the Death Copters is now a minimum unit size of 3 compared to the previous 1 to 6 size that it could be taken back in 8th. So once again, like the Death Copters, the overall minimum cost of the smallest unit possible has gone up to 120 from 50, but per model, the Killer Khan has very much improved over its previous version. The old options of the Khan Claw, the Buzzsaw and the Driller have all been scrapped and combined into just one nice single melee weapon which is the Khan Claw which retains the same profile of strength plus 3, minus 3 AP and 3 damage giving the Killer Khan a very tasty strength 8 in melee with a new and improved 4 plus to hit. And then on the ranged weapons front all of its weapons aside from the Grotzuka have seen some significant improvements. The Scorcher has gained 4 inches of range going up to that brilliant 12 inches in case you wanted to deploy these guys out of the teleporter. The Rocket Launcher like we saw on the Death Copters is now heavy D3 rather than Assault 1 meaning that the Killer Khans can still move and fire at their full ballistic skill as they're not infantry although of course you will not be able to advance and still fire it anymore which is a bit of a shame I will admit but I do think that overall going to D3 shots is much better than having the Assault 1 profile. And then the Big Shooter has of course jumped from Assault 3 to the divisive and yet arguably better overall DACA 5 slash 3 meaning that when you are within 18 inches of the enemy you are getting 5 strength 5 shots instead of 3. Now the key thing to note with the Killer Khan is I think that as it stands the app is a little bit wrong. It states that all of the weapon options for the Killer Khan are 0 points and honestly I just don't see that being realistic. Jumping from a big shooter to a rocket launcher is 100% not going to be a free upgrade. So with that in mind I do think that whilst the Khan Claw will likely still be free, the rocket launcher and possibly Grotzuka will probably end up being 10 and 5 points respectively, still putting the Killer Khan at an absolutely brilliant 50 points per model for a Khan Claw and rocket launcher loadout. As we mentioned yesterday the loss of Daka 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 is a shame but as I said just before the bump to D3 shots on the rocket launcher instead of the Assault 1 realistically does massively overshadow that extra shot you might have gotten with the old 8th edition codex and I do honestly think that 90% of the time you will be glad to have those D3 shots rather than the one assault shot that could possibly get you another shot on a roll of a 6 to hit. And of course they do make up for the loss of Daka 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 by gaining the Ramshackle rule which is honestly absolutely spectacular on the Killer Khan profile because let's be honest most opponents won't really want to waste super heavy anti-tank guns like Laz Cannons and Melters and Dark Lances on these guys. Hopefully they will be wanting to try and finish them off with lighter firepower like heavy bolters and auto cannons and that sort of thing and dropping them from 2 damage to 1 damage 
is an absolutely huge detriment to the amount of damage they will be able to do to you. And likewise, if you charge your unit of Killer Khans into a squad of Blade Guard Veterans or Incubi, their previously two damage weapons and power swords will all of a sudden feel incredibly tame as they just slash against your hull doing one damage a pop. But even all that isn't the biggest improvement for the Killer Khans. The biggest improvement for these guys is that as far as we can tell from the latest leaks and previews is that Grots and Grot units are no longer prevented from getting access to culture traits. So unlike in the 8th edition codex, your Killer Khans can now be benefiting by being part of a Goth clan or a Snakebite clan or an Evil Sons clan. So all of a sudden, your Goth Killer Khans are getting plus one strength on the charge and having sixes to hit in melee explode into two hits. Likewise, your Death Skulls Khans can now reroll a hit or a wound roll and also have that five up to ignore mortal wound attacks. And of course, Snake Bites, as we've already seen, can now never be wounded by strength six or seven guns on less than a four plus, which makes them even more resilient to those assault cannons and auto cannons and that kind of firepower which your enemy will likely be aiming at them. And so I think that overall, the addition of the culture traits to Grots and to these Killer Khans is quite simply a game-changing buff to their usefulness on the battlefield. And being able to take three of them for either 120 or 150 points, depending on whether the prices in the app are correct or not, means that you can get a very mean, very nasty bully unit that can put out a whopping 12 strength 8 attacks in combat, each doing a flat 3 damage, thanks to their additional rule, which is still the same as it was in 8th, but Scragum gets your models an extra attack if there are three or more of them in the unit, which obviously based on the new minimum unit size, there will be, at least until you start losing models. And that leads us to the downside of these guys, especially now that you have to take them in minimum squads of three, and that is of course their leadership of six. Because as soon as you lose one Killer Khan, you are going to be vulnerable to leadership, as you could very well fail a leadership test with just one casualty. So the three squad size is fantastic for gaining that extra attack, but you do have to be aware that one roll of a six on your leadership test could mean that another 40 or 50 point model is automatically going to be running away and then you could very well lose the last one if you fail your attrition test after that and that is a pretty hefty price to pay. But despite all of that, overall I am a big big fan of the new Killer Khan's price and stat line and weapon options. They are admittedly very similar to the Devcopters in their profile, their ranged weapons and their price, but in terms of their role, I feel like if you need more movement and board control, then Devcopters may be the way to go, but if you want a hard-hitting, bully, durable unit that you can send into your enemy's battle lines and chew through heavy infantry or even tanks, then Killer Khans may well just be your new best friend. But what do you think of the Killer Khans? Do you like their new points cost and do you think the app is wrong and they will end up being 50 points for a Khan Claw and Rocket Launcher loadout? And also, do you think they are going to see much play on the battlefields of 9th edition? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I will catch you later guys.